And this is what it means to be big money. I think I'm just gonna wear this down in the town, so. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, today uh, is should be a, a kind of a fun day. Driving south on PCH, uh, still in the Toyota Mirai hydrogen-powered vehicle. Although we did do a fill-up with this car uh, the day that it arrived at the pad, uh, I needed a little bit of fuel, so I'm going to drive over and uh, and fuel it up myself. First time by myself, going to check it out. But then I'm heading over to visit a friend, uh, Greg Gill from the Automobile Driving Museum. He's over. He lives over in Pasadena, so we're going to go and visit him. He has an interesting vehicle that has not been seen in years. This is an exclusive. It's going to be an opportunity to see a car that has not been in the public for a very long time. Eventually, it will be at Wheels and Waves, so we're going to take a look and show you guys for the first time up close and personal. It's hydrogen baby all day so let's go Once again, setting up the whole Mirai fill-up is actually very easy. Actually kind of high-tech. All right, we're good to go. One thing I do like about this car is when you take the seat belt and you put it in, the seat and the steering wheel automatically adjust. That's cool. This is a fabulous place to be, Greg. It's a fabulous place to be, because uh, you're here. We're in a, a <laughs> top secret Altadena location. Yeah, um, kinda. You won't ever know where this is, but uh, it's spectacular, because this is the home of Greg Gill, and, and many um, wonderful plants. The plants are wonderful. It was planted as a botanical garden in the 1920s. We've got surviving letters of them buying the trees. Wow. And landscaping, actually, uh, the mountain, mountain View mausoleum. So we were here to go and, and check out this incredible vehicle, which we'll get to. But yeah. uh, I, I stumbled across this fabulous home that you have. This incredible uh, craftsman. It's a uh, arts and crafts architecture from 1915. Oh, man. And, uh, you guys are going to dig this. It's cool. Welcome. Yeah. We don't often have bugs, but it's bug season. 
we've got all the screens off for the restoration right now. So when the house is open, the bugs will come inside. <laughs> you know, they just kind of buzz around, and at night I turn the lights off and they go away because they're attracted to light. Just kind of hang out. Just, we're living with nature. So it's called Solvang. It was named this by Christian Waldemar Christensen, who had the long-term uh, ownership of the home. He was Danish. It meant sunny field. And you see the plants when you come in now, but that's what it looked like. There were no plants. Nothing. What year was that? 1915 was when the house was built. Can you see her? That little statue right there on top of that black pedestal? Yeah. Can you see her right there? Ooh. Uh, Mr. Christensen died without heirs. All of his stuff went to the Children's Hospital Fund store. I bought them from a lady in Orange County on eBay. Her mother bought them from the Children's Hospital store in 1964. We have the receipt. These came back to the house. God, they're stunning. Uh, they're called Mameluke Prince and Princess. They're a Victorian era casting. I've seen them in solid bronze. This is cheap cold painted metal. It's kind of faded, but they were here long before I was here. Tune. It's awesome. I would have cleaned my desk, but that's uh, my office. This is Greg's office. This is where the real work happens. This is cool. <laughs> Look at that. And right over there is an incredible car. It is kind a of car place. that you haven't seen in years, if at all. If at all. It's been hiding. Although I did have somebody, I showed it uh, at our local club. He, I walked across the parking lot, came right up to me, older me, he said, I know that car. Where has it been? Hoping that maybe by putting it out there, if anybody knows about some of the holes oh, yeah. of where this car was since it left uh, its original owner. We'll it's still about. assembling it. You guys yeah, want to see it? We're still putting it together. Let's, yeah. Let's go check it out. It's cool. We have to kind of block the car so that no one sees it right there. <laughs> block the car. <laughs> this is so special because it's the only one in the world. The only one. It was ordered by Edsel Ford from the coach maker uh, Hermann Brun. Mm -hmm. And it's the only one. And I've got a letter on Mr. Bruin's stationery showing that it's the only one talking about the car. And why is it the only one? It's the only one uh, because they built something else afterwards. This was a, an effort at the time. The coach builders were going out of business because they weren't doing coach built cars. Because so Bruin was the coach builder? Bruin was the coach builder. And it was commissioned by, by Ford? Edsel Ford. Edsel Ford. Okay. Edsel Ford. At that time, the manufacturers were keeping the coach builders in, in business a lot. They would handle their quote-unquote concept cars or special cars yeah. for the manufacturers' families and stuff because mm -hmm. their business was drying up. Yeah. So they were relying upon contracts from Ford at Al Lincoln mm -hmm. um, and other large cars. Mm -hmm. So the Brun family had been close with uh, the Ford family all along. Mr. Brun, had, the elder Mr. Brun, I think, had worked in an uh, early uh, Ford factory like in the 20s or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so Brun is the coach builder. And what year's the car? Uh, it's a 1938 Lincoln Zephyr. And it's pretty cool. You guys want to see it, don't you? Yeah. You really want to see it. Okay.
said that this is like sitting in a movie theater. Not any movie theater that I've ever been to recently, but it's the kind of movie theater that you would want to go to. There are moments when you're sitting there and you feel like you're Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio comes in. <laughs> Drive me to the stars! I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing a really cool project. I don't want to say too much about it because uh, there's still a lot of balls in the air. Not really going to reveal exactly what that is, but although if you have been watching the vlog, you may have seen something, something that I'm playing with, and playing is what we do best. Now we're going to go grab the hydrogen powered Toyota Mirai and we're going to go for a spin. We're going to grab our buddy Bob and uh, we're going to go up to the County Line store to get a beer. They're going to get a beer. I'm going to get a root beer. We're picking up Bob. I'm gonna go get a beer. Yeah. Or something. seeds for to grow a guava tree. Now if you're familiar with a guava tree it pretty much only grows in environments like where Hawaii is you know kind of that central hot tropical kind of thing and we weren't really sure that even though we're in Southern California and there can be tropical aspects of it whether a guava tree would actually grow or not. Cut to 10 years uh, now we've planted the guava tree it's right outside in our garden and last year we we got kind of a first crop of guavas you know they were about this big and and they 
they were tasty. And guava is my favorite fruit. Ever since I was a kid, I went to Hawaii when I was about nine or 10 and had guava juice and that was, that was it, I was hooked. But recently with all the rains and stuff that we've been having, guavas have been starting to percolate. Things like this. Now, if you're not familiar with a guava, um, it's yellow on the outside and well, pink on the inside. And I like that. The other cool thing about guavas is that you can pretty much eat the whole thing. Mm, phenomenal, phenomenal. Now, if you've never had a guava, you can't really describe the flavor because it's, it's kind of sweet, but kind of tangy at the same time. It's like an explosion of tropics in your mouth. Perfect line for a commercial. Amazing. Mm. Also, big thanks to Sarkeesian. Sent me a bunch of chocolate coffee. This is my favorite coffee of all time. And every time I order four bags, uh, Deborah, who is the owner of the company, sends me an extra bag. Oh, it smells phenomenal. This, this is gold. Even though it's in a red bag, it's gold. Thank you, Deborah. You're a queen among princesses. A few things going on. First of all, let me say a uh, big thanks to uh, Greg Gill for having me over to his house and checking out amazing place, right? I mean, incredible place. Tremendous amount of history uh, and, and cars there that Lincoln Zephyr. Oh my God. Greg, of course, is one of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet. If you ever come to Wilson Waves, if you've been to Wilson Waves and you've met him, uh, he works with the, the Automobile Driving Museum, but he also has his own company, the Greg Gill Company. He brokers cars and does a lot of really great things for clients. If you have a kind of a high-end car and you're not really sure who to go to, find out, you know, what you can do or how you can sell it or, or you know, find someone that is right for that specific car, Greg is the man. All right, people, you've got to get out there and you got to do what you love. You got to identify what you love and you just got to make it happen. You got to just get out there and enjoy yourself. It's a spectacular time of year. There's all kinds of wonderful things to look at. Be grateful for what you have because the more you're grateful for what you have, the more cool stuff comes. And always remember, always remember, there are only two rules for success. Number one, never reveal everything that you know. And number two, 